I was going to sing, but I'm just going to say thank you for doing this interview. Although when I say those words, I kind of want to sing it, you know? Sing it. <laughs> awesome. The Golden Girls, the last continue coming to the Broadway Playhouse February 6th through the 25th. We have two of the stars here, Jason Bowen, who plays Stan and Bert, and Ryan Bernier, who plays Dorothy. Thank you both so much for your time today. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ryan, let's go ahead and, and start with you. This isn't the 1980s Golden Girls. This is set in uh, in modern times. Yeah, it is a really, yeah, we're, uh, the idea is that we're uh, kind of bringing a Golden Girls episode back to life as if it was happening right here in uh, 2024. Uh, now 2024, we used to say 2023. Um, so there's all sorts of fun things, you know, we have uh, uh, fun, let's call them uh, romantic connection apps. We have... Um, uh, Sophia facing some legal trouble and Dorothy trying to wrangle it all together and we have some new love interests so it's uh, kind of this like it's like if the Golden Girls got to be on HBO you know <laughs> it's it's a it's a fun way of uh, bringing these characters back to life uh, in the modern day and age. Awesome and Jason you play Stan and obviously Stan and Dorothy have a uh, some history. Uh, tell 38 me years of I'll history play yes yeah <laughs> definitely 38 years of history that uh, we and the iconic moment of the door slamming and Stan space is is paramount to the production as well. I'm going to ask both of you, but as far as like preparing for that dynamic, like do you have to get into character like before the show? Is there kind of like something that you bring out in, in each other to kind of play those moments off of each other between uh, Stan and Dorothy? No, I actually hate him. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, like, I think the great part about uh, both Jason and I as performers is that, like, I think we're two people who truly live by the, like, yes and rule of acting. Um, it's very rare that I get the chance to play so hard with someone on stage <laughs> that, like, I laugh, they laugh, and it really is just like a party. Um, and that's something that I think that is, like, really cool about performing with Jason, and it's, and it's consistent every show. There's never a show where, like, either one of us walk off stage and we're like, Oh, we messed up. It's just, it, it's a consistent celebration between the two of us. Awesome. And then yeah. Jason, as far as playing, as far as playing Stan, I mean, obviously this isn't maybe the most popular of characters or people are, you know, maybe might be rooting for Dorothy or they might be rooting for him, but tell me a little bit about, about putting, bringing him to stage. You know, it's really funny. Uh, it, every audience is different and actually every, and cities are different too. There have been some cities where I'm booed off the stage, but booed with love which is yeah. strange. Um, sometimes when I leave the stage, people applaud that. I, and I'm not sure if they're applauding that I'm leaving or they're <laughs> applauding because they had so much fun. What's great about playing Stan and Bert is um, the four the four core girls, obviously, and R Ryan being Dorothy, uh, they have this amazing relationship with each other. And I get to come in and disrupt it and play with it. And a lot of times I think Ryan would probably agree is he, they're not always sure what I'm going to do, uh, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Uh, for me, <laughs> and, and, and I'm sure and it's great to, the great part that people actually, uh, they, they take from all of us is that we're having a blast together. It's obvious, it's very clear on stage that we're all having fun. So the audience has to have fun too. It's, and speaking of having fun, Dorothy's having fun. She's having, she has a new younger lover, you know, which is kind of, you know, a, a little fun thing for her. You know, you go Dorothy, tell me a little <laughs> bit about that and that dynamic uh, with Stan. Uh, we, uh, with that, our, well, we hate Stan, but we love Bert. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what I think has been like the the biggest uh, like joy in bringing this kind of new relationship to life is like Dorothy never really gets um, like a, a win romantically on the show. And I think that that's something that like people who love the Golden Girls are so ready to see. And it's something that we get to do every night. And uh, there, there are so many moments, uh, specifically in we, uh, Dorothy and Bert have a very large scene that is maybe one of my favorites in the show to do. <laughs> and um, it's crazy to watch people become so excited that they actively are yelling like, yay, Dorothy, go Dorothy. Or like, uh, I don't remember what city it was in where someone just went, oh, finally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it's so cool because it feels like you're sort of a part of the canon of the history of the show. And that's like, the, as an actor, that's kind of like the coolest thing to do is to get to carry on a legacy that legendary women of comedy and TV built for you. And, and Jason, I'm gonna ask both of you this question, but Jason, I'll go ahead and, and start with you. What is your like core memory of the Golden Girls? Cause I know like for me watching it as a kid, every time there's a, re even though I've seen these episodes 350,000 times a piece, like it's on and I was like, I have to watch it as if I've never seen it before, but people have such a strong connection and it feels so 
modern, even though it was 34, you know, almost right. 40 years ago. What's brilliant about the Golden Girls is it's an ensemble show. So there's not one star or lead. All four of them are were amazing comedians. And the four performers in this show, Ryan being one of them, give the utmost respect and love and joy for these these ladies. And what's great about when it was on the air, it dealt with really topical issues and controversial issues and taught lessons, but still did it with fun and not negating anybody, um, but just educating and but making it fun. And also that just because you're older doesn't mean you can't um, you can't have a loving relationship. You can't have a sexual relationship. You can't uh, have friendship. And that's really what the show is all about. And I think when people leave our show, not only are they, they're coming to see what they see on TV and, and I'm going to be totally honest and Ryan would agree when people come in, the show that we do is literally like a, a taping of a live show. So the laughs are there, the lines are there. Obviously there's a lot of liberty when it comes to the, the storyline that we're doing, but it follows the story that a, a show would have on, on TV too. So when they leave, we're hoping that they leave all the, the trouble they had before and just have a great time. And I've said it before and I hope they uh, thank each other for being friends, you know? Oh, basically, what about for you, Ryan? Um, one of my core memories, I think of like the Golden Girls, like I, and I think it truly, the more I've watched it has really shaped me as an actor and comedian is the Henny Penny episode. Um, it's there, it's the big musical episode where they all end up in like various bird costumes. And I remember like recently watching it and thinking like, God, these are three legends, four legends who are just so unafraid of looking dumb because they know that like it's for the sake of their show and for their comedy and it's something to work off of. And I think so often, like I just got out of grad school where like everything is like theater, dark, uh, an actor prepares, like <laughs> find your process. Um, and uh, very rarely do you get the opportunity to think like, well, sometimes it's just important to be silly so that people can laugh and they can connect with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like an episode that like, it's the perfect example of it. Uh, that's, I mean, so like when I think about the show, like that's a core memory for me. That's a lesson that I consistently take with me into every show, into every city we go to. That is awesome. I mean, you, you just mentioned that. I mean, that could be a whole another, you know, several hour conversation, but like, I think Lucille Ball, Carol Burnett, the ladies from the Golden Girls, Deborah Messing, like all putting, you know, Back icons. vulnerable. Yeah. Oh my gosh, Carol Burnett's last quote. What did she say? Uh, what, what she just, it was at the Emmy. She just said, um, uh, I, it, it truly warms my heart to see men doing so well in comedy. And like, <laughs> that is the kind of like line uh, for that that generation of actress has at the ready. And it's something that like, as we develop this show, we're all kind of like refinding that rhythm that we've never gotten to explore before. It's, uh, if you can't tell, like I'm super excited about everything we get to do in the show. Um, and I, I, I just, I get all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Jason, you're from Chicago. Uh, yeah, I lived here. I lived here in, uh, from 2000 to 2015. I ran a theater company on the North side, um, did print and commercial work while I was here. I, I moved away and live in Detroit now. Um, I'm a corporate entertainer, so I travel and I host events and MC. So this is awesome to come back to Chicago. Um, I have some family here and friends, and uh, I'm, I'm stoked to be here, and especially in February. It's the best weather you can have. Well, especially, you know, it's two and a half weeks, so it's not like all your friends and family have to try to catch you within a couple of days. You have time, right. and it's too. Like I said, right. you know, we watch episodes all the time. People can come see the show multiple times. Right, and it's right downtown. Like, it's right in Whitewater Tower, so it's super accessible to the trains, the buses, um, and I'm sure there's parking. But uh, yeah, and it's a great it's a great venue, and there's so much to do in Chicago before and after the show too. Yeah, well, you get to validate the parking at, at Water Tower, which is nice because then you don't have to go outside. Hopefully, it's not snowing anymore, and it's it's nice weather. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Ryan, let's talk a little bit about Dorothy's voice. Tell me a little bit of how you prepare uh, to to bring her on stage. Oh gosh, it is uh, one. It, I, huh. Truly, if I had to think about <laughs> it, I think that's the thing that um, is the scariest moment of the show. Uh, me or Sophia has the first line and our Sophia is not only like a replica, uh, she paints, or Christopher paints so beautifully um, to create that illusion. Uh, but Christopher's also like our golden girls lexicon. Uh, and so you can tell the audience, like it's that thing of like, they recognize game. Like they recognize when someone knows their stuff. So uh, Christopher walks out, he says the line, everyone freaks out. And then I'm like, okay, do or die. Here we go. Um, 
And it was a matter of like, what is it that people really connected to about B. Arthur's voice? Is it the warmth? Is it is it like the light uh, accent? Um, you know, what what is it about Dorothy's voice or B. Arthur's voice that makes her so iconic? And uh, like I said, I had just gotten out of grad school. I uh, had this amazing voice uh, professor, uh, shout out to Foster. And um, uh, he broke down a way to create a dialect that I had never encountered before. And using his four steps of like listening to the music of the person's voice, trying to understand where they're from, trying to understand like what must like what muscles are they using to create that? What what like what are their lips look like when they're speaking? Um, using all of those little tricks, uh, I kind of found this thing very naturally. And uh, then my mother came to the show and she was like, "Oh, you're doing." You're like you're doing your aunt or you're doing this <laughs> and the audience members come up uh, as they're, they're like oh you sound just like the arthur and my grandmother you sound just like this. And, it was, and what i realized is that like this voice is just about making people feel like uh they're a part of a family and so i think that's been uh like the greatest joy of it is is once i feel like i've really settled into the accent um and her speech pattern uh, it's watching the audience go oh, we're in for a treat. <laughs> we, we can trust this person because they're not just going to, you know, make fun of her. They're really, mm -hmm. they really do their due diligence in, in bringing this character's voice to life. Is that a moment where you can just kind of do it like maybe a sigh of relief? What, you know, Sophia does her line, you start talking, the audience reacts, and then you're like, okay, we got this. Every time. <clears throat> Every time it is, I, honestly, I'm I'm panicking. You can ask anyone in the cast. I am sitting by myself on the couch, like kind of like going through it and like doing what I think I know how to do and trying to be friendly with people, but just panicking. And then that line happens and I'm like, whoo, okay, we're good to go. <laughs> awesome. And then Jay, are you seeing people dressing up or kind of living their their best Florida vacation? Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. There's always groups of ladies that come. There's always a Sophia, a Blanche, a Dorothy. They have shirts that even say who they are. We can spot who they are. We point them out. Um, but I, what Ryan had said, going uh, uh, with what he's talking with the, the way everyone speaks, that's what I think everyone's anticipating when they come to the show. And there's lots of Golden Girl shows out there. But I tell you, these four, these four guys, they are amazing. Uh, people are mesmerized. They, they believe that these women have been resurrected and are back on stage um, because they're so good. Uh, it's, a, it's, right an honor, it's an honor to work with them. That is amazing. And I also love that it's a modern story. So we get to see the iconic set. We get to see these iconic characters brought into modern times, which is something we've never seen before. So I'm super excited to uh, to check out the show. Oh, okay. And the clothes, the clothes are accurate too. So yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you both so much for your time today. Golden Girls, The Laughs Continue at Broadway Playhouse, February 6th through the 25th. <clears throat> Broadwayinchicago.com for tickets. Had the best time in, uh, in Chicago and we will see you both very soon. Yeah, we can't see wait to soon. see you at the show. Thank you. Thanks.